So you didn't get any chicks from last week's sweep tapping lick, huh? Hmm. Well, let's try minor seven this time. Chicks love minor sevens. <laughs> Hello children, it's your Uncle Ben back with another installment of Weekend Wank Shop. Now with 100% more riboflavin. Now I heard that you struck out pretty badly using that sweet tap crap lick that we learned last time. And I'm a little disappointed. But fear not young one, cause you're about to learn a new lick that's gonna turn you into a certified chick magnet. Now I'm gonna assume that even those of you from France are smart enough to understand that if you have a cool idea on the guitar, you can make it cooler by simply adding more notes to it. It's a complex principle, but it's always true. And that's exactly what we're going to do here today. We're going to take that D minor arpeggio we explored last week and add in a swanky minor 7 to it, which will turn it into a D minor 7 arpeggio, which definitely has a higher price tag and is more likely to impress. First things first, let's hear that lick again at stepdad speed. And as always, kids, you can find a full tab for this week's lick on my Instagram page, which you can find over there at Ben Eller Guitars. Check it out, learn the lick, uh, make a video of yourself playing it, upload it with the hashtag Weekend Wang Shop, so I can check it out and see how you was doing. Okay, so for those of you guys who weren't there last time, here's the D minor arpeggio that we utilized for last week's lick. Again, a D minor is the notes D, F, A, and that's what we're going to use in this arpeggio. Now the way I'm choosing to play it, D, F, A, D, F, A, is like this. I'm going to play the 17th fret on the A string, 15th fret on the D, 14th G, 15th B, 13th high E, 17th high E. And again, note-wise, it's D, F, A, D, F, A. Now that's kind of your garden variety D minor arpeggio, but what we're going to do here is to add in a minor 7, or you could call it a flat 7 note. Chicks go crazy for flat sevens. What this means is that we're going to take the root note of the arpeggio here, in other words, the D, and we're going to add in the note a whole step below it, which is C. That's what makes it a minor seven. Minor seven is a minor chord or arpeggio plus the minor seventh added in, or you could call it the note a whole step below the root. So in the case of like an A minor seven, it's like an A minor with a G note, the note a whole step below the root. E minor 7, it's like an E minor plus a D note. That's the note one step below the root. Minor 7, flat 7, whatever you want to call it. That's how it goes. Okay, so with this right here, we're going to modify this D minor arpeggio that I just outlined by adding in these C notes here. The first one is on the 15th fret on the A string. So the A string gets two notes on fret 15, which is C, and fret 17, which is D. Uh, 15th fret on the D string. On the G string here, we're going to play fret number 14, which is the A note, and I'm going to add in that C note again right here on fret number 17. There's a C note, so I can use them right there on the G string. You could look at this as, you know the note we began on down here? See, it's just an octave. It's the octave of that note. So, so far we got this. 15th A, 17th A, 15th E, 14th G, 17th G. Then I'm going to play the 15 here on the B string, 13 on the high E. Uh, 17 on the high E, and then what I'm going to do is to play fret number 20 on the high E with a tap. That's that C note again. Okay, so in other words, if I was just to look at the C notes that we've added into this arpeggio, I'd have one right here, one right here, a little octave, and one right here, again an octave of that. So I've just taken this one C note and added it into every octave of this arpeggio. So again, the basic thing is outlined like this. And then that last note is also bent up a whole step to make it into D, uh, which would be the root note of that arpeggio there. So get that basic outline down. And then now let's explore exactly how to put this thing together. Now some of you guys might already be scratching your heads a little bit as for why we're calling this D minor when we're starting off on a C note. That's very confusing to a lot of guitar players because we're kind of trained to always think of whatever the first note is 
Well, that's the root note. Like how you find all your chord shapes and power chords and stuff like that. It's always named after the first note, you know, the one that you play first in that chord. And uh, that's not always the truth at all. You can take a chord and play any note as the first note of it, chord or an arpeggio, either one. You can jumble those notes up however you want to, and it's still the exact same chord. So you could put the root note first, you could put the third first, you could put the five first. In this case, we're putting the minor seven in there first. It really doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what order you put them in the chord. As long as it's the same ingredients, you end up with the same thing. It's a lot like eating a bowl of cereal, you know, where it doesn't matter if I put the cereal in first and then the milk or the milk in first and then the cereal, you're gonna end up with a bowl of cereal either way. Only difference is, is if you put the milk in first and then the cereal, you're a fucking idiot. All right, kids, let's check out this tasty morsel right here. Now, last time we played a D minor in sequences of three, and clearly it wasn't quite enough to get the job done. So this week we're gonna up the octane a little bit. Like I said, we're using a minor seven, which is a little bit more expensive. We're also gonna sequence it in fours this time, okay? So in other words, what we're playing here is four notes and then back some, four notes and then back some. Has a really cool sound to it, like this. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and so on. So what we're gonna do to begin this is to play that 15th fret on the A string. So that's a C note, again, that minor seven of this chord here. And we're gonna play that with a downstroke and then hammer on fret number 17 on that same string. Important to hammer on, if you picked it all, this would be a big pain in the ass. So 15, 17. Then we're gonna play 15 on the D, 14 on the G. One, two, three, four. Next, what we're going to do is to play the next highest note up. So in other words, we started here last time, right? And then followed up with this. Well, that's where we're going to start this next grouping at, is at the next highest note. So we're going to play 17 on the A, 15 on the D, 14th G, hammering on to 17. One, two, three, four. Next, what we're going to do is to start off on the 15th fret on the D string and play four from there. So we're going to go 15th D, 14th G, hammer on 17th G, 15 on the B. Next, we're gonna start off on the 14th fret on the G string here, hammer on to 17, 15th B, 13th high E. And then after this, we're gonna start off on the next high scale note, so 17 up here on the G string. What we're gonna do is to play 17th G, 15th B, 13th high E, hammer on to 17. Pretty much any time throughout this lick when we've got two notes on a string, we always end up kind of hammering one on. Just makes stuff a little bit easier. So, so far we've got... And next what we're going to do is to start off on the 15 on the B. 13th high E. Hammer on to 17 on the high E. And then what we're going to do is to tap on that fret number 22 on the high E string. Yeah, I meant to say 20 right there, not uh, 22. So it's like this. That's the last note in that group of four. So again, there's 22 high E string. I did that again there, didn't I? 20, not 22. Never start huffing glue, kids. And after you tap that guy on, using your other fingers that you got back here, bend it up a whole step. Just like that. That kind of wraps that note up nicely up here on the root which is that D note again. So again, it's all groups of four. One, two, three, 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 four. One. Just like that. So there you go, kids. Another sick lick to add to the good old wank bank. Hopefully score yourself a hot date this week. In the immortal words of the great David Lee Roth, tell us how you do. Be sure to follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Ben Eller Guitars. And drop me an email, benellerguitars at gmail.com, so we can get to work on booking some one-on-one -on -one Skype lessons where you're going to learn all that cool, hunky guy stuff that you've always wanted to know about memorizing the fretboard, theory, scales, modes, omelets, waffles, all that good stuff. Drop me an email, benellerguitars at gmail.com. Thank you guys again so much for watching. I appreciate it, and we will see you next week. Cheers. Floor it.